points, lines, and planes. First, let's talk about a few undefined terms. A point indicates a location and has no size. It also has no dimension. So we just want to use a dot to indicate a certain location. And again, it's important we talk about it not having a size because it doesn't matter how big your point is, it doesn't cover any more space than a smaller point. All it does is tell us a very specific location. A line is represented by a straight path that extends in two opposite directions without end, and it has no thickness. So in order to show that this is going to extend without end, we're actually going to put arrows at the ends of our line. And the part about it having no thickness, that just tells us that if we have another line that's much thicker, again that idea that it doesn't cover more space than a thinner line. A line contains infinitely many points. So if we're actually taking a look at each line, and you should remember this from Algebra 1 on the coordinate plane, is we're talking about an infinite number of points that just collect together to make a line. When we talk about a plane, it, it's represented by a flat surface that extends without end and has no thickness. So you want to think about a surface like the floor or the ceiling, your desk, your computer screen, but you have to imagine that it extends forever. So the floor of your room, of course it ends, it doesn't go further than outside of your house, but you have to imagine that it goes on forever, infinitely, in all directions. So the way we represent this is with a parallelogram. And with that parallelogram, we'll refer to it with the letter in the corner and refer to this as plane C or you can use three different points on the plane. So I'm just going to create points D, E, and F here. And we could refer to this plane as plane D, E, and F. This plane contains infinitely many lines. So just the same way we talked about how a line is a collection of infinitely many points, you have to think about the fact that a plane is a collection of infinitely many lines. So we're going to talk about a few of these diagrams that we'll be using all year. The very first one should be really familiar. This is a line. And the way that we write a line in symbols when we're talking about it, you're going to use the two points. It doesn't matter which two points. In our case, we have A and B. And then you're actually going to put a line above it you have to make sure you put the arrows to tell us that it extends forever. You can also write it the other way, BA. And this one, the order is not really going to matter because again, we're talking about the line that extends forever. The second one is kind of like the first, except instead of extending forever, it gets cut off at A and B. This, you should also be familiar with, is called a line segment. Now the notation is going to be similar to a line in the sense that you can put AB or BA. The order doesn't matter, but the one thing that's different is a line segment. You're just going to put that segment mark above the letters. You're not going to have the arrows at the end. So it's really important you know the difference between these two. Here we have that same line segment, but we have these red arrows pointing to what we want to talk about, which are the endpoints. Now for endpoints, they're just going to be listed as points. So we would say point A or point B. This next one, it's kind of like a combination of a line segment and a line. This should be familiar to you. It's called a ray. And when you're talking about a ray, you're going to use those two letters again that you have, but this time it's going to be kind of like the combination of this symbol. Is It doesn't go any further than A, but it goes forever in that direction of B. So we want to represent that here. It doesn't go past A, but it goes forever in the direction of B. Likewise, you can switch the letters 
except you want to represent the exact same ray. So it doesn't matter that this ray happens to be pointing to the right, we just want to list that it starts at A and then it goes forever in the direction of B. So your arrow, your symbol on top, has to represent what your diagram is showing. This next one is pointing to the start of the ray. That is called the initial point. And again, we just want to list that as point A. Now this next one, this is also a ray. It's just going in the other direction. So we just want to practice the notation for this. This one starts at B and goes in the direction of A. So you can write it like this, starting at B, going in the direction of A, or you can write it like this, starting at B, going in the direction of A. Now this last one, I want you to pay attention to the color coding because it does look like a line, and it is, but we want to focus on the blue part and the red part. So these are actually two rays going in complete opposite directions that have the same initial point. When you have that happening, they are called opposite rays. And the way we're going to write this, it's just the combination of two separate rays. So we have ray CA, and then we also have ray CB as opposite rays. And of course you can write this the other way, ray AC going forever in the direction of A, and then ray BC going forever in the direction of B. Here we're going to use the diagram to the right to answer the questions below. So I want you to take the information that we've talked about so far and <clears throat> I want you to hit pause, answer these four questions in your notes, and then when you're done you can go ahead and press play, check back with me and see if you got the right answer. Now I know this is a little hard to see this notation, but these are arrows at the end of that so this is referring to line XZ. Go ahead and press pause and try to answer these questions. Okay, so let's check our answers. For number one, you should have gotten xy, yx, zx, yz, zy, and the very last one, if you weren't sure, see this little m here and also this l here? Sometimes lines can also be labeled by a letter. It's usually lowercase and italicized and right by the arrows. So we can also call this line m. For number two, we have ray WY and WV. Now make sure that your arrow for your symbol is pointing in the correct direction because we need to have an initial point of W. For number three, two pairs. We can have ray YX and YZ, and the other pair is YV and YW. And again, make sure your symbols are pointing in the correct direction to signify the correct ray. And the last one, how many different line segments are shown? You should have gotten a total of six. Now, if you got 12, you need to be careful because this is talking about different line segments, not, this is different from number one, which says how many ways can you name something? So we actually have line segment X, Y, Y, Z, X, Z, V, Y, Y, W, and V, W. Now you could have written any of these the other way with the letters flipped, but it doesn't make it a different segment. So you should have had six total, so be careful of that. Next we want to talk about a term, collinear points. Collinear points are points that lie on the same line. Now remember this by co meaning together, linear means line. So you have points together on a line. So I want you to go ahead and take a look at this diagram pause, answer the three questions, and then check back with me and see if you got them right. Hopefully for one you got E, for two you got point A, C, or E, and then for three you got the answer no. Now let's take, it a, term, take a look at a term that is really similar, and this is coplanar points. These are points that lie on the same plane. So again, we have co together, planar, you think of plane and points. So points together on a plane. Now looking at this diagram, remember we need to think about planes as surfaces. So this is like a box, so you have the top, the bottom, 
the front, the back, the left side, and the right side. So sometimes seeing three-dimensional figures in 2D is a little tricky, but you kind of need to train yourself to be able to see that. So go ahead and press pause, try to answer these three questions, and then check back with me to see how you did. So number one, hopefully you got points M, P, O, and N on the bottom plane. Number two, T, P, O, and S on the back plane. And number three, are T, P, R, and N, are these four points coplanar? Now your initial answer might have been no, because the planes that we talked about on this box, top, bottom, left, right, front, back, those four points are not on any of those planes together. But I also need you to stretch your thinking a little bit, like you're going to need to do the rest of this year, and think about planes that exist but are not necessarily drawn. So I want you to think about it this way. If this were a sandwich and your mom was cutting it through the diagonal so that you have two triangular pieces, these consider those the four corners. You can take a knife and take one straight slice through all four points. Now that would create another plane. So even though these four are not technically on a visible plane right now, they are coplanar because you can create a plane, a straight plane, that does contain all four points. So this is just a preview into how you're going to kind of need to stretch your thinking this year, see beyond the picture, um, and just think logically about what is possible. Okay. So we're going to use this diagram here to discuss these two vocabulary words intersect and intersection. Now these are a little different even though they seem similar and hopefully you remember from all your English classes that to intersect this is a verb. So we're talking about two or more geometric figures to have one or more points in common. Now when you're looking at this diagram look at this line very carefully. There's this portion that is dotted. Now that dotted portion, it just shows you that this line is going through the plane, and so this dotted part is the back side that you technically can't see. So if this were a colored piece of paper, like construction paper, and you just poked your pencil through it, <clears throat> at an angle, you wouldn't be able to see that bottom part, the section that's hidden by the paper. So that dotted line just represents that. Okay, so let's take a look at this and kind of see what we have. What are the geometric figures that are intersecting? We have the plane M, and we have this line. Those are intersecting with each other. So I'm just going to label this as line PR. Now we know that there are multiple ways that you can label that line, but I'm just going to label it that way. Now let's take a look at the term intersection. So this is the noun and it's the set of points the figures have in common. So we want to talk about the line and the plane and what exactly do they have in common. Now, if we did take a piece of paper and puncture it with the pencil, the only thing they have in common is that hole that we made in the paper with the pencil. So the only intersection we have is point Q. So that is the intersection of plane M and line PR. Now here, I want you to just take some time, go ahead and press pause, and I want you to answer these four questions. Well, you're really following a prompt to draw a sketch. Make sure you label, because labeling is really, really critical in geometry. So go ahead and take some time to work these four out, and then you can check your answers with me when you're finished. So hopefully your answers look something like mine. It might look a little different and still be correct but the main thing should be there. Points A, B, and C together on a line. Line MN, line PQ intersecting at point R. Points W, X, Y, and Z together on one plane. You could have used the corners, like in that one example with the box, that's fine. And opposite rays J, K, and J, C. Now with this, point J has to be in the middle and then K and C on either side. Now we're just going to close out with a couple terms to set us up for the rest of our lessons this year. 
Postulates and axioms are rules in geometry accepted without proof. So we don't actually have to prove these. These are things just given to us. Theorems, these are statements or conjectures that are proven true. Now all the theorems we're going to be talking about have already been proven by mathematicians many, many years ago, but we are going to work through the process of how to write up a formal proof, and we're going to use these theorems to help us with what we're doing in this class. Now remember, if you had any questions while working through the notes today, make sure that you use the form on the website to submit your questions so that we can review those during class. Okay, that's it.